Hey, what's going on guys? It's JD Headstrong. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build this pretty simple gas-based blast chamber. It didn't take me that long to build, but I figure it's a pretty nice one and can be used in a whole bunch of different scenarios. It's not too expensive either. Really, the most difficult part of this to get in survival mode would be the gas, and that's entirely possible. It just takes a little bit of work. I will say though, if you're going to build it in survival mode, you are going to need a gas farm, which I don't have a design for, unfortunately. But I'm going to show you how to build it right now. So you're going to start by placing a block like I've done right here. Uh, it can be any block and doesn't have to be this far off the ground either. I put it here so when we put the snow golem in, uh, he's going to be over there probably. He doesn't get distracted by mobs on the ground as easily. Uh, that probably won't be an issue in survival mode if you make sure to encase this thing in something. But given that I'm working in a super flat world, slimes are a big issue and I'm having to deal with them. But after we place our block, we're going to place a second block on the side. A minecart rail right there. It can be any kind of minecart rail. I just chose powered rails because they're going to come in. This, they're going to be necessary later in the build. And then we're going to place a minecart on top of the rail. We're going to break the minecart rail underneath the minecart and place a gas. We can break the block behind the gas right there. And we have our gas in place. That That's how much you need to do to get a gas in place. And that's only in creative mode. Getting one in place in survival mode is probably significantly more difficult. I don't know for a fact. I haven't tried it. But this works in creative mode. Would work in survival mode, but it requires a little bit of work to get the gas here. But we're going to continue with the build now. So from underneath the gas, we're going to move forward by 12 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We can break all of these blocks except the last one and the first one. There we go. This block needs to stay in it. You don't count it as number one. You count one from it. Then we're going to count up by three. So one, two, three. Move two blocks over in this direction and three blocks over in this direction. Then we're going to break, break all the blocks in the middle and this bottom block down here as well. We can then place our tripwire hooks, not on the side like that, like this and fill in the string right there. This is going to be what's detecting the fireball that the gas fires out. The next step is actually going to be redirecting the fireball that the gas shoots out. That's going to be relatively simple. Uh, the, the reason we put this tripwire hook here specifically was so we could detect where the fireball was. There were probably other locations I could have chosen. I just chose this one because it was the simplest to build around. So we're going to go down by one block, build one extra block over so it's two blocks wide, and go up by a block. I'm going to fill that in with redstone right there, and place a sticky piston on the side of that block. I'm going to make a little backward L shape, and in theory, when we get the snow golem in place, this should, should, I've built this twice now trying to get this tutorial made, shoot the gas fireball over in that direction. That's what you need because that means you've got the uh, blast chamber working because now you can just redirect the fireball where you want it to go and blow up what you want to blow up. So the next thing we're going to need to do is put in our snow golem chamber right about here. So for the snow golem holding chamber, we're going to move over by one block from these slime blocks and then back by one. We're then going to move down by one block as well and place a block uh, right there. I, I don't really know how to describe that. We're pretty much going to be making a one by a one by one by two little holding cup for a snow golem. This is going to keep him from being seen until we want him to be seen. So then we're going to place some sticky pistons on the side uh, on this side of the cup, and then we're going to put a block right there, uh, not snow preferably. <laughs> We need a lever, ignore my battery dying, but we're going to need a lever placed right there. And this is what's going to allow us to reveal the snow golem when we want to activate our system. Then we're going to place the snow golem in. Let me quickly grab the snow I just got rid of. There we go. And then we can just open and close this when we want to start it. So, the next step is going to be putting in what aggravates our snow golem. He needs to be aggravated, so he shoots at whatever aggravates him, in this case a creeper, misses, hits the ghast, and the ghast shoots at him. 
his fireball will then be deflected and blow up whatever we wanted to, which we haven't put in. Uh, I might just put in a, a obsidian wall for the time being, but I also might do a basalt generator. I'll probably do that, but it depends on how much time we have left. But to start, I'm going to show you how to build what aggravates our snow golem. Uh, to start, we're going to put two blocks over like that. So it's going to be one block below there, one block below the tripwire hook. One block farther down, and then one block out like that. We then need to figure out where is centered with our the block underneath our ghast. So right about here, we're going to put two blocks over like that. And this is going to be the center of our little minecart rail that we're going to put here. Center is important because that is going to help us with how wide this needs to be. This platform needs to be seven wide, centered with our ghast. Like this. This block isn't necessary. I'm using it as a marker for the time being. Then we're going to put minecart rails on top of all of these blocks up top. And then we're going to go up by one, preferably not with snow. Just like that. Put a button on one side and a minecart. Then for every block except the center, again, Whoops, I put it on the center. For every block except the center, we're going to put up this little wall, this barrier. Try not to fly into the tripwire while you're doing this. I've done that, and it reveals our snow golem, and it's it just kind of breaks stuff. It's not all that fun to try to fix. So now we have the whole thing constructed, this, this section right here. I'm going to put down our creeper and fire the system so we can collect the creeper. Now... Ignore the lag. The lag is very bad in this version of Minecraft. 1.16.101 uh, really increased the lag for the Pocket Edition, and I really don't know why. It's just a little bit aggravating. But we can open our Snow Golem compartment and notice how neither of them fire at each other. They just don't want to. So then we press this button, and you saw what happened. Snowball hit the ghast, and if we wait a second, the lag is causing some issues. The ghast should fire back at our snow golem. If it doesn't, you can fire the system once or twice to get it to do so. Uh, but it will eventually become aggravated at our snow golem. There we go. Okay, so yes, it does work. I was concerned for a moment that I'd misplaced some blocks, but no, see, it works. Uh, that is going to travel off into the distance uh, while more are fired by our ghast. If you want to shut it off, you just have to come over here when the ghast is not angry and close off the snow golem. He'll stop firing and you won't have any issues. Whenever you want to start it or stop it, you need to remember to do things in this order. To start, you start by opening this and then pressing the button on the creeper. Once shutting it off, you need to wait for your snow golem, your your ghast to no longer be angry, to not have his attack face on, and then close the snow golem compartment. If you wait until he has his attack face on, he'll fire a fireball, which will hit the tripwire and cause this slime block to pull away what's hiding our snow golem. So this is the order you need to do it in. But that is the blast chamber complete. I will be building up a basalt generator that goes with it over in this area here in just a moment. So I have the gas blast chamber running as I'm going to be building the basalt generator so I can experiment with the repeater timings a little bit to see what works best with the speed the speed that the gas is firing fireballs. Um, over here I have a quick prototype of what I'm going to be making the basalt generator. I've built this one before, it's a pretty cool one. Basically the lava up here flows downward into this block space, where it is instantly converted into basalt. As soon as it is, this fires. That sticky piston right there pulls the basalt back, and this regular piston pushes it down as soon as this sticky piston retracts. That's going to allow us to push down as many of these as we're going to need, and we can fiddle around with some repeater timings to make sure it's not too fast for this, to make sure we don't have a ton of loss, and to make sure it's not too slow, making it so we just don't have good rates. There we go, perfect. 
The next step is just going to be getting the repeaters set to the correct number of ticks. They're going to be right here. We just need to make sure that it runs at about the same speed that this gas fires. Now, I usually do this just via experimentation. There are other ways to do it. You could actually figure out how fast the gas fires. But this works fine, in my opinion. I, I don't see any reason to, to do that. I'm going to put down a total of six repeaters right here. And then I'm going to have this block be on top of a upward facing sticky piston, like so, with another sticky piston beside it. This is going to be so we can start and stop the redstone clock we're building instantly with ease. No problem should arise in the starting or stopping of the system. Now, if you build this farm along with the blast chamber, you have to remember to stop this first, or you'll end up with just, you'll end up pushing your collection system into the ground, and that's really not what you want. So if I flick that lever, the clock should start. Now, it's definitely a little bit of a fast redstone clock right now, but we can definitely fix that. So we're going to turn the repeaters all the way up to four ticks, and we'll see how that looks. This should allow us to push the ba uh, basalt downward. And hopefully we'll start getting basalt blown up here in just a moment. And there we go. Okay, so it works. And that is the basalt generator put in place as well. Building all this stuff together, it it's a pretty simple process. Um, it allows you to get large am amounts of basalt in a relatively short period of time. If you want to be sure that your basalt generator is not going to move your storage system like it did right there, I recommend putting a line of immovable objects, which I'm going to be using obsidian like I have for everything else in the video, down below it. Uh, th this will just make sure that you don't have to replace your collection system every, every little bit. So that is the entire system built. Uh, we have the gas blast chamber and the basalt generator. They work very well put together, uh, like I did here. Remember though, if you're building this gas chamber, uh, don't make the same mistake I did and think it can blow up cobblestone. I'm a little bit of an idiot. I, I made that mistake and then realized that it could. I was very sad. But I will be putting a materials list for this build down in the description of the video. Uh, I'll have two different materials lists, one for the gas blast chamber and one for the basalt generator because they're not the same build and can be built independently of one another. Um, yeah, if you liked the video, remember to leave a like, and if you really liked it, uh, make sure to subscribe. Uh, and thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any redstone ideas, anything you'd like to see me build, remember to leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Um, yeah, with that out of the way, I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.